to the December, yes, December vlog. <laughs> Trying to remember what month it is. Welcome to the December vlog. I'm Lizelle Sambri. I'm a young adult author. Um, and you, if you watch my video, I'll post it back over here about two weeks ago now, should probably be. I talked about what I'm going to be doing for December, what I'm going to be working on. And so it's going to be a focused month vlog where I'm going to be focusing on, um, drafting a new horror so i explained the whole spiel but like tdlr um i have a horror book on submission right now and it's a standalone and we're gonna try and you know kind of pursue a two book deal which means i will need to if the book sells write another horror and so i thought while that's on submission i would work on um doing plotting out a companion book essentially so that if they're like do you have an idea for what a second book might be I can be like oh he hello it's this thing um, so I'm working on doing that right now um, and so far I have actually done some work I have started so I had a bunch of like info dump stuff that I put together that I just like jotted on my phone whenever I got ideas. And so I started a new Scrivener file and I basically like pulled everything from my phone and put in the Scrivener file. And so now there's just like a bunch of all over the place Scrivener files. <laughs> and I've been like noodling on it a lot. This is something I do like in plotting stage is that as I go about my everyday business, often when I'm in the shower, I'll think about scenes and like what sort of scenes that I want to see in the book and what sort of scenes I might like. And I'll basically like run to the computer and I'll jot those down. Sometimes I will write out the scene. I've written out two scenes. I've written out like a beginning scene and then like a just random in the middle scene. And I'll think of all sorts of stuff and I basically just brain dump it all um, while I try and figure out what the beats are. So. So far for this book, my first challenge was deciding what the inciting incident is. So this is like, I don't usually plot in order of the Save the Cat beats. Um, what I usually do is I will first try and figure out what the inciting incident is. And so this helps me because when I know what the inciting incident is, it's easier for me to figure out where the story should be starting um, because I like to think really hard about where my story is going to start, excuse me, because I don't want to start in the wrong place. Um, and I think um, something that I had struggled with a bit on my horror was making sure I was like kind of starting in a place that would provide like quick enough pacing. Um, figured it out in the end. I think that was just kind of a slower burn story in general. So it was all right that you know that first act was a little bit longer hopefully it's all right <laughs> um but anyway so with this one i kind of want to do a bit of a faster pace so this horror like the big setting is a school um so it's essentially like a um what am i what's the word i'm looking for it's like a private school but it's set up for scholarship students only and so the book is about the family that owns that school and so that's the setting the school is the main setting um so my main character she'll like live at her house like there will be some boarding students like some not it's a whole thing um but essentially or maybe there won't be boarding students at all the more I think about it the more it just makes sense that they would just commute um but anyway that's neither here nor there the main thing is that the setting is a school and so I want this time when I'm doing the book I want them to get to the school setting really really fast in my first horror book that's on submission it's just like they're moving to a new town and so like all this stuff happens before and then they have to go and get to the town um whereas like the school setting like they're pretty much already there so it's gonna start faster um but there's a character who's kind of being released from jail and i was deciding whether i wanted that to happen right from the start or whether i wanted that to be the inciting incident and what i decided was i want that to happen right at the start and i want the inciting incident to be something else 
And so I just had to figure out what that was. If anyone doesn't know, now that I've said it so many times, like the inciting incident is like the big thing that happens to your protagonist that forces them to take action and forces their world to change. Um, so, you know, like, it's hard to tell with some books. Like I was gonna say in The Hunger Games when she like volunteers as tribute, that's the inciting incident. Um, and I'm like, is it when she volunteers as tribute or is it when Prue gets picked? I think it's really when Prue gets picked is what I would say is the inciting incident. Yes, I would say that. So <laughs> that's basically what it is. So yeah, I did a bunch of noodling about that. I also thought of like a creepy, a very creepy thing to throw in. I think I figured out what the big twist is because with this horror, I think it's gonna edge a lot more on thriller horror so I have to like figure out my twists and like red herrings and stuff so it wasn't a complete waste that I spent time in NaNoWriMo learning about thrillers because I can still use a lot of that stuff I just think I'm going to structure it differently so yeah that's that's my update for I've only done like two days of work so far because I had a lot of freelance stuff I still have a lot of freelance stuff to do this week that's why I'm made up because I have to do a video so yeah so that is the update and it was very long and uh, I'll update you in a while I'm doing this update again because last time I did the update I tried not to reveal a bunch of personal information and I did anyway so here it is again I'm here I have my French vanilla mix in my Tim Hortons mug it has so much sugar in it it's amazing though it's really really amazing anyway so plan of things so tomorrow we're gonna be going down south so um a family member is having a surgery and they need someone to look after them and so we're gonna go down there and look after them for a day it's not in toronto it's like a town outside of it but we're gonna go there and look after them and then we're also gonna get all that ikea stuff for the house and for the office so i can do the office remodel i will do a whole office remodel video i don't know how like different <laughs> be but like it's gonna be painted and stuff so it'll be pretty different and then after we do that we're also gonna stop by the house in Toronto and we're gonna grab um the rest of my stuff because we basically had a like what are we going to do with our future talk now that things are COVID and I'm like not working in that sense like I'm not like working at a building um and I'm working from home and that sort of thing and like all sorts of other stuff <laughs> many factors but the long and short of it is i will be staying up north uh for like the next at least a year and so we're just gonna grab the rest of my stuff it's basically my books and my clothes which i like because i need to get my clothes actually a lot of my clothes don't fit me anymore <laughs> so i might have to get new clothes but i at least want to have different options to see what i cannot fit in um i'll probably get new clothes in the new year hopefully i'll be able to and so that's the plan so that's what's gonna be going on i guess for the rest of this week starting tomorrow i'm excited to get the rest of my books because there's some books i really wanted to read and i didn't bring them with me and yes i did like last time bring with me three books that i was like Lizelle you have to read these and then I read none of them but this time 
what's gonna happen once my office is remodeled i'll be able to have like a dedicated like a tbr like a physical tbr shelf so i can physically see the amount of books that i have not read and hopefully that will prompt me to actually read them so i'm gonna <laughs> be doing that and yeah so that's kind of the plan i have worked a bunch on my horror i've actually made like so much more progress than i thought i would have made at this point because i've been so casual about working on it i've kind of just been like if there's a stream going on then i'll hop on the stream and i'll work on it um but like if it's just a regular day and i haven't like because here's what's okay <laughs> i'm gonna be coherent now so i've been writing one either because there's a writing stream happening or two because i get a brainwave about the book and then i like go in and i like jot in a bunch of stuff and i just end up doing a bunch of plotting because i'm already in there doing that and then otherwise i don't really work on it so but when i do work on it i do actually get quite a bit done so what i've done i finished filling out all the save the cat beats including what all the subplots are going to be excuse me if you don't know when i structure my fun and game section of save the cat what i do is i put in a bunch of subplots there and during that fun and games i'll like start a bunch of subplots that i'll like finish off before the first act ends usually and so i did all of that so all the major plot points are all filled out um all the character sheets are filled out and so uh what i started doing was the chapter by chapter and i actually filled out all of the like what's gonna happen in every single chapter except for the fun and game section because that is the worst part to plot but there is going to be a live stream tonight i think i'm not sure if i'm going to be able to join in because we're having to do like some last minute stuff for the house before we leave and go down south so i might not be able to join in i might have to wait until thursday to do any writing stuff so we'll see i guess we'll see how like chaotic <laughs> the trip ends up being um but yeah so I've gotten so so much done so all I need to do is finish plotting out the fun and game section and then what I'm gonna do I mean not plotting out finish like putting what's gonna happen in all those chapters and then what I'm gonna do is like, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna write a full synopsis and I'm gonna go like ham with the synopsis uh, I like to write a detailed synopsis a very 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 detailed synopsis and then I can write like a shorter one so this one I think like it's probably gonna be at minimum 10,000 words because just my save the cat like plot beats that I've written out, that's 2,000 words. And so <laughs> I imagine putting the actual specific detail in there will be much, much longer than that. So I'm aiming for kind of like a 10,000 word synopsis and then I'm gonna work on that um, and get that done. And after that, I'm gonna try and do a pitch letter. <laughs> My pitch letters since querying days, I feel like in querying days, because I worked so super hard on my pitch letters and I like sent them to all sorts of people and I like did all that like stuff that like I was like, I had fire query letters and now <laughs> pitch letters are bad. Anyway, I'm trying, I'm going to try and do a much better pitch letter this time. Um, I don't know if I said this for my horror, my like <laughs> agent, I was like, please help me and she like rewrote the pitch letter and like the one that she wrote was fire and the one that i wrote was so very bad um so write a pitch letter and then i think i'm gonna work on um getting those three chapters and then i will have like what would be a complete like proposal um and so i'll be able to have that for the second horror for like pursuing a two book deal so that's what i'm gonna that's the, i can't remember if i said that was the full picture before but anyway so that's the goals i'm hoping that by the end of this week i at the, i have to have all those chapters done but i'm hoping i can have at least half of the synopsis done i mean the what is it called? No, it is a synopsis. Yeah, half of the synopsis done. But if I know myself and I know that I'm ridiculous and I know that I'm a productivity hoe, my real goal is at the end of the week to have the whole synopsis done. So we'll see. I know I literally just did like a super long update, <laughs> but this is really important. I had to come here to gush. So I filled out 
the fun and game section of like my chapter layouts and I just finished filling out that and it's just like it's so good I feel like it's gonna be so good like I'm really happy with all the plot points I've outlined like it really like I feel like it's I feel like it's like gonna be scary I think with my first horror I was kind of on the fence of like whether or not it's scary but I know there's a lot of like really good points to it like it's very it's a very cerebral horror and I think really that's the strength of it but I actually think this one will be scary and I'm really excited so I just came on to say that I did that I'm really excited and so now all I have to do is actually write the synopsis which I think I'll be able to do yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna solidify that goal and say I'm gonna finish it by the end of the week that's my goal and then next week be done the chapters and the pitch letter yeah back and I have not written anything I don't know why I think that on trips I'm going to do stuff because we're in the car it's a this time because of where we had to go um, it was 10 hours so it was a 10 hour drive back and forth so you might think well wow, Lizelle in those 20 hours you must have like gotten so much done you definitely didn't just like stare blankly out of the window and like play on your phone that whole time right like you did stuff and you would be wrong because I did <laughs> spend the whole time like playing on my phone and like doing sweet fuck all. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> that was basically it. I did, though I did accomplish one thing. I did finish reading uh, Romancing the Beats by Gwen Hayes, I want to say is the name. I'll correct myself on screen if I'm not right. But Romancing the Beats is basically like a writing craft book about romance, but using using the Save the Cat beats. So it shows you how to like write romance using those beats and that sort of thing. So I read it. It was a very it was a much quicker read than I expected, which is why I actually got it done. <laughs> Cause ask me if I ask me if I finished reading Surrender Your Sons, which I was supposed to be done reading in like four days and that is not the case and it's not because it's not good because it's actually really really good I just like ugh. anyway uh, so I finished reading Romancing the Beats my thoughts on it are uh, I really liked it I gave it five stars on Goodreads for me what I like is I like something to be formulaic and that's why I love Save the Cat so much because it's just like this is what you do in this section this is what you do in this section this is what you do in this section it just gives you clear focused steps and that's exactly what Romancing the Beats does it says this is what you put in this beat this is what you put in this beat etc etc and that's what I really like and so I'm really happy with that and I'm really excited about um, improving my romance um, I'm gonna start using those Beats, like the stuff I learned as soon as like writing my sequel so <laughs> I wrote the first draft of my sequel for Blood Like Magic and I know that I did the romance badly and I understood that and I understood that I would try and fix it later I wanted to get a bit more feedback on it though but now I'm really excited about having that because I already have some ideas of like how I can adapt that for the sequel so I'm really excited about doing that and so I think that's really good. I think like I don't know I don't know if like you feel this or whatever but sometimes I feel like there's like perhaps like a judgment that if you're doing something like save the cat or like the romancing the beats things and you're using that distinct formula that if everyone's using that formula aren't like all books going to feel the same and it doesn't. 
Uh, to me, it doesn't make a difference because I've read so many books, especially now that I know the Save the Cat beats. Anytime I'm reading a book, like I will automatically be like, oh, this is the Dark Knight of the Soul or like, okay, this is like the midpoint twist or you know, you just kind of start to realize and it frankly doesn't matter because I think like to me, like what makes the thing of the book are the characters, is the story, is the writing, is all those things end up being more important than that repeated structure. And I think there's lots of ways to play with that structure as well so that you're still kind of doing different things even if you are working within the realm of it. And so that's what I like about things like that, like Save the Cats and Save the Cats. <laughs> Sounds like a slogan. Save the Cat and Romancing the Beats. So I think that's going to be super helpful for me and I would recommend it. I'm not doing a whole video on it because it was honestly the shortest book. <laughs> So I'll just say in here, that's what my thoughts were on Romancing the Beats. Now for a plan of like actually getting work done. So today I'm also not getting anything done because we essentially I've now basically moved up here um, just because of circumstances and COVID, etc. So uh, we brought the rest of my stuff up from Toronto and then we also bought a bunch of like we did an Ikea click and collect so we could get stuff for our living room and stuff and the remodel I talked about this before whatever anyway so our living room was filled with stuff <laughs> and now we've kind of reallocated it to the rooms but like I have a bunch of stuff to put away I have to put away a bunch of clothes I have to put away and figure out all my stuff in the bathroom and so I have to work on that and so I'm pretty sure that's what's gonna end up being my focus for today. I don't think I'm gonna get any writing today. So tomorrow, again, because I'm ridiculous and I really wanna get this synopsis just like completely finished rough draft by the end of this week, I'm going to challenge myself to write the whole thing tomorrow, which will probably be at minimum 10,000 words. So in the morning, I think quite early my boyfriend has to go out um, to do some client work for his job and so I'm gonna get up when he gets up I'm gonna sit up down into the, at the computer and I'm gonna work on the synopsis until he gets back which should be several 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 hours later so I'm gonna it's gonna become a 10k in a day challenge to write this synopsis <laughs> will I succeed or will I fail I guess you'll see tomorrow starting out great for one I've just woken up uh, I thought it was gonna be like 9 uh, it's like 1130 probably I should have set an alarm for myself um, my boyfriend did not end up going to his work thing so then that was what I was gonna use that's why you gotta use yourself <laughs> that's what I was gonna use to wake up and that didn't happen so now it's like 1130 um, at 2 p.m. Alexa Dunn is doing like a live with some sci-fi authors on her channel and I really wanted to tune into that. So my plan is I will write steadily until 2 p.m. I will take a break to watch that um, and then I guess I will write steadily again. Uh, I will update you throughout the day with the word count. Yeah, so <laughs> I guess we'll see how this goes. clock p 
p.m. and I am at 3,697 words. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I am just done the first act now in the synopsis. So yeah, that's that's the length of my synopses. So I'm kind of almost halfway. I realized that um, the sci-fi panel on Alexa's channel that I wanted to watch, I thought it was at 2 p.m. That's actually Pacific time. So it's actually at 5 p.m. Eastern time. So I decided I would take my first break now. Um, so I'll take a break from 1 to 2, and then from 2 to 5, I'll go back to writing. I think I should be, like, how much, what was I, when did I start? 11.30, 12.30, um, I've really only been at this, like, 12.30, 1.30, if I want to be generous. So, like, two hours it took me to write, like, 3,500, so then 2 to 5, that's another three hours. So I think I should be able to get to like six or seven thousand, something like that. And then after the panel, I should be able to do the final ten. With the way things are going, sorry, I like looked down that whole time, but <laughs> with the way things are going, I don't know that when I hit ten thousand, I'll actually be done the synopsis. I don't know, but we'll see how much I can get done. Um, the first act because i have to set up so much stuff i feel like the synopsis is like very very detailed then but i think once i get to like the midpoint and the fun games and like that sort of thing i probably won't need to include as much stuff and like the synopsis might start going faster in that case and so that's kind of what i'm gonna do there i don't know uh but i think now that i've done like an hour or so's worth of work, almost two hours worth of work, and I've gotten almost 4,000 words. I feel more confident that I can hit the 10,000 word goal. I'm just no longer confident that 10,000 words will be enough for the synopsis, the way this synopsis is going. But yeah, I'll update you again. Um, after, I guess right before the panel, I'll update you again. Good news. I hit 10,000 words, so I did actually do it. Things went awry, so here's what happened. <laughs> at 1 o'clock p.m., I said I was gonna take that break because I thought the live was at two was at two o'clock p.m., but I was like, oh no, it's actually at five o'clock p.m. And so I took my break and I watched some Attack on Titan, and then at 2 p.m., wouldn't you know, I get a notification that says the live is happening, and I was like, oh, it is at 2 p.m. actually, and so, <laughs> Then I watched that, and so by the time I had finished like taking my break that I watched Attack on Titan and then also watching the live, it was like 4 p.m. And so I was like, Lizelle, this is not gonna go your way. You're not going to do this. This is not gonna happen for you today. You have already screwed this up for yourself. Like you've, you've already played yourself. And yet somehow we thrive. <laughs> so I did, Finish. I got to 10,000 words, so that's awesome. Um, but yeah, the thing is I'm not done. <laughs> so I'm at, uh, what am I at? I'm at Dark Knight of the Soul now in the Save the Cat beat. So I have Dark Knight of the Soul left to write in the synopsis and then the whole third act. Uh, so there's still more. So I think I was like, oh my gosh, I'm just like tired. I was like, I just need to end here. But I really, really, really just want to get done this synopsis. The thing about writing a synopsis for me is that it's not hard because I'm not having to, it's just different from writing prose because I'm basically just writing verbatim everything that's happening. So I can write things like, so-and-so was sad about blah, 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 blah happening. And then this happened and then this happened and then this happened. And so it's so casual that I truly, it does not take as much out of me than if I was like drafting 10,000 words. And so I think I can keep going. So it's six o'clock now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a break. I'm going to eat dinner. I'm going to watch some Attack on Titan. I'm trying to catch up. I'm re-watching the third season because I literally have no memory of anything I watched so that I can watch the new season. So I'm going to eat some dinner, watch Attack on Titan, 
and then I'm gonna jump right back into it and I'm gonna try and finish the rough cut of this synopsis because I just want to be done I just want to be done so that next week I can work on the pitch letter and the first three chapters so yeah that's what I'm gonna do so I'll update you later I came up with a code name for this book and I'm pretty sure I forgot to tell anyone <laughs> Excuse me, so the name I'm using for this project is hashtag bear hunt. Um, related to the nursery rhyme, we're going on a bear hunt. Uh, because the main family that the book is focused on, um, their last name is Bear, B-E-H-R-E, -E, um, which is, yes, inspired by, um, uh, em what is it? Is it called Empire? Yeah, Empire. Um, they have the last name Lion. I always liked that. I always liked having like that last name that feels like that like is like an animal name. And I like the power of that. And I especially like it just makes me think of like a powerful family. I actually did never watch Empire. I meant to watch it. My mom watched a bunch of it and then I just like never watched it. <laughs> but anyway so that's why I gave them that last name um also there's like so I could use creepy nursery rhymes about bears um and they fit so well they honestly like the creepy nursery rhymes fit amazingly <laughs> to this book I was inspired by horrid um horrid by uh I believe it was Katrina Leno that sounds correct so in the beginning of that they have like a nursery rhyme that's like quite creepy and i was like man i love that i love using creepy nursery rhymes <laughs> so um i actually thought about making the last name bear before i even like thought that i could go and look up creepy creepy nursery rhymes so that's how that went anyway what you probably want to hear about <laughs> Did I complete my 10k mission? And I did. I wrote not only 10k, I wrote 13,323 words um, and finished the synopsis. So that was how much words the synopsis needed. It needed like 3,000 more than the 10k. I honestly, no one is shocked more than me. I am, sh I'm very shocked. I'm very shocked <laughs> because I was at like 4,000 words when I decide when I ended up taking that mega break so I'm honestly the most shocked that I managed to get as much done like that I managed to get all of it done because it was looking pretty grim there um and I'm the sort of person where my productivity runs out like at a certain time it really runs out and I was like oh I can't be doing this until 10 at night and I wasn't I think I finished at like when did I finish? I figured I finished at like seven or something like that. I actually like did it quite quick. And that's the beauty of working on a synopsis to me is that I can write a synopsis so much faster than I could ever write prose <laughs> because I'm just like verbatim telling the story. Like things I'm like, despite the fact that she's agreed to work with blah, 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 she's still suspicious of him. And like, you can write that sort of stuff like I don't have to make it prosy and so it's like I really actually enjoy writing synopses because I can tell the full story to myself and when I'm doing that it's a lot easier for me to pick out plot problems or to look at something I've decided to do in my outline and be like actually I don't think that's gonna work because I've planned out everything so much more in detail um, and so I usually use a combination of my synopsis and my chapter outline to help me um, plot out everything partially just because there's some things that I put in the chapter outline that I wouldn't put in the synopsis so for example I'll like in a save the cat thing like I'll write something like false victory and that sort of thing and I wouldn't write that in the synopsis obviously anyway so I'm very very happy to be done so all that's left now um for my rough draft of this whole thing is I'd like to get a pitch letter ready and I'd like to get a first three chapters ready these in my mind will be easy um and I will tell you why <laughs> so I actually have already written several scenes and like chapters like well not chapters just like several scenes out of context um just out of order and so like I have like chunks of chapters kind of already done so the first chapter is basically already done there's also an epigraph and a prologue I know me I'm writing a prologue 
with my hate on for prologues and yes I am writing a prologue and here's the thing here's why I'm okay with myself writing a prologue one prologues in horror books are different it's prologues in fantasy and sci-fi books that I find are largely unnecessary and just info dumps and they're terrible but prologues in horrors thrillers suspense novels those are all very necessary and feel very like for the genre and they make sense and also they're short they don't go on for a full chapter which is the thing i find with fantasy and sci-fi prologues the prologue is like a full ass chapter it's like 2500 words nobody asked for that nobody asked for that and so anyway <laughs> the prologue is gonna be so short it's gonna be like five pages max um so yeah so that's what i'm gonna be working on um I'm debating doing the fourth chapter as well because if I do the fourth chapter I'll be I'll finish out the f entire first act and I think that'll just be like more satisfying so I might just go ahead and do the whole first act and write that um so the plan is to do a chapter per day so today is Monday so do one chapter today you know and then I should be done by Thursday. You might be thinking, you're probably not, but you might be thinking, what about that pitch letter? When are you gonna do that shit? And so I'm actually gonna work on that today because the first chapter, which isn't the prologue, I'll probably, oh right, I have to do the fucking prologue and stuff. Uh, I'll do the prologue in the first chapter. I'll do them both today. I'll figure it out. So I'll do that and I'll do the rough of the pitch letter. And so then every day I'll go back over the pitch letter and kind of rework it um, because I've become very bad at doing pitch letters lately. Like, I don't, I think, I don't know. I think it was just the last horror book. It was just, it was difficult to pitch. <laughs> and my agent was very helpful. So that is the plan. So today, um, do the prologue and the first chapter and write the rough draft of the pitch letter and so that's what I'm gonna work on I guess all morning now I think I'm gonna watch I missed Kevin and Laura's live stream where they um, did uh, the last live stream of the year I missed that because of traveling and like the relative we were looking after doesn't have like Wi-Fi so I couldn't participate or watch so I'm going to watch that right now and have some tea with eggnog and then yeah i'll just work on that all morning i have to like do some chores and stuff in the afternoon so i'll devote my morning to this and then i'll do the chores in the afternoon i did not end up doing my pitch letter i wrote the epigraph which is like I, it's a nursery rhyme i did not truly write it <laughs> and then i wrote the prologue and the first chapter uh, yeah so i got that done um and i'm really happy about having that first chapter done i think that's like a good base um i think it's intriguing enough considering like uh, considering how this book is like it's not gonna be a big wham bam thank you ma'am as a fantasy might be because it's it's a horror and it's like a different sort of horror also than my uh the one on submission which is a little bit it's like still quieter but it is a little bit more of a wham bam thank you man but anyways i've got that done today i'm going to work on getting the second chapter done excuse me um and i don't know i like gotta do the pitch letter at some point i'm starting to think that maybe i'll just do it on Friday because I'm doing a chapter a day and I'm doing four chapters so I am just gonna do the whole first act um, and so today's second chapter Wednesday's third chapter Thursday's fourth chapter and then Friday I would like to get the pitch letter done and then I'll have all the stuff rough that I wanted to get done so yeah that's my super quick update I also caught up to Attack on Titan Attack on Titan is an anime it's awesome you should like watch it unless you're like squeamish it is about like essentially giant giant like humanoid things that like eat people um and it kind of sounds like it's funny until you watch it and you realize it's actually very grim I literally bawled last night because of stuff that happened <laughs> And so I had to rewatch the third season because I forgot a bunch of stuff and it turns out I literally didn't even watch the second half of the third season. I don't know what happened there. Maybe I was too traumatized. Anyway, I've watched that and I'm caught up now to the two episodes of the new season. I'm super happy about it. 
if you are a writer and you can handle squeamishness and you are like down with anime, Attack on Titan is so good for writing. For just like seeing how to make like a bonker story, but like with a really like strong foreshadowing and like a strong mystery and also to learn how to torture your readers absolutely because i've never been so, so i've never been so tortured since the days of full metal alchemist brotherhood um so yeah that's all i gotta say about that and uh i'll update when i've done some more stuff i belatedly realized that this hairstyle kind of makes it look like i have a bald patch but i don't have a bald patch there's hair growing this is the reason, I'm remembering now, this is the reason why I part my hair here and I do this thing because I'm like, I don't know, maybe it's just thinness? Anyway, whatever, it's too late. <laughs> I'm, I have the hairstyle, I'm gonna film like two other videos with this hairstyle, I don't even care. So if you think I have a bald patch, then you think I have a bald patch, but I would assume you would never say that to my face or in the comments, so anyway. <laughs> I felt lazy about doing like my whole thing where I like define the curls and whatever so I just like brushed everything out um, and then like slicked it back into this poof but it is like very big like impressively large when my hair is all puffed out uh, did you come to this vlog to listen to me talk about my ball patch and my like hair poof? Probably not, but here we are. Um, so <laughs> I'm basically done. I'm ending the vlog here, but I'm basically done. And part of me, a large part of me wanted to end the vlog and say that I was done because I know I'm going to get the work done later and just like pretend like I had done everything. But then I felt like too disingenuous. <laughs> And I was like, I can't lie. So anyway, <laughs> I'm not yet done. I have one more chapter that I need to write, but I know I can write it today. It literally takes me 40 minutes to write a chapter. I just like procrastinate all day about doing it, even though it doesn't even take me that long because I'm ridiculous. So, oh my gosh, now my dog's coming over. Hi. Were you lonely? Okay, well, she's here now. Uh, point. What is the point of this? Anyway, so I'm basically done. I just have one more chapter to write, but that's whatever. I'm going to get it done today. I'm just ending the vlog here anyways. <laughs> um, yeah, so this, like whole thing working on hashtag bear hunt which I think is also the title I'm gonna use and I'm also fine sharing this title because it's again it's one of those things like when I shared the title for my NaNoWriMo project the building like it's not a particularly original title so I don't care if anyone jacks it it just like fits the story really well so I'm gonna call it bear hunt um, and I'm really excited this has been like a really good process for me I'm super happy with like writing out the full synopsis really made me fall in love with the story and be really excited about it because I think it's I don't want not to toot my own horn but to toot my own horn I think it's gonna be pretty banging I think it's good and it's a good, I think it's a good companion for my haunted house book that's on sub because there are some like similar themes of like family and that sort of thing. But this one is a lot heavier on the horror tropes, which is really what made me super excited. Um, like there's a chase scene, which I meant to do in my first haunted house book, but then it just didn't work out. There's like a chase scene. There's a lot of like wondering, like who done it which isn't really a horror thing that's just like a mystery thing but like ugh, i can't even like get into all of the tropes because like a bunch of the tropes i use are like spoiler trope things um and yeah so i can't even say the tropes without spoiling the book but i'm really, really excited about it i'm really excited about this character and i like how the writing is coming together um i think the voice is becoming a lot more distinct. And I think the voice ended up being a little bit more, what's the word? 
Like, I don't want to, like, basically bitchy. It ended up being more of that than I had originally intended, so I might finesse that. But I really like it because this is kind of my first time writing a character who is so different on the outside and how they present themselves from how they are on the inside, which I think really looks works well for this sort of story where you're kind of wondering who is guilty and who has secrets and who's hiding things. And I think that really lends itself because you are following a character that is very clearly spending most of their life lying. And so I think it's really intriguing and I think that's gonna be super fun. So I have the whole, so I have a rough synopsis. I have a rough, oh my God, the pitch letter. It is the roughest of pitch letters and I wanted to finesse it more, but then I just like did it. So I wrote that, so there is a rough pitch letter. And then there's a rough three chapters of which I will write the fourth today, which will be the whole first act. So then I'll have a rough first act. So then I'll have a very rough like collection of what this story is going to look like that I can kind of, I don't know, at some point finesse. I don't know when, uh, but at some point I will make that better. So yeah, that was the entirety of this um, working on horror book to hashtag bear hunt um the little sneak peek i guess <laughs> of it because i'm not actually writing the story i'm just like doing this little thing so that i have something to show to be like this is what i have in mind so yeah so that's all done so that's really exciting and now i'm also excited to basically take the rest of december off those two videos i mentioned i'm going to film today are the videos for the rest of december <laughs> So that I'm not, so that I can just like get all those done basically this weekend so that I'm not having to do anything for two weeks, even though I'll still have videos coming out, which I really like the idea of doing. So I'm going to be doing that. And then in January, I'm going to start fresh. I'm going to be working on the Blood Like Magic sequel. If you don't know, Blood Like Magic is my debut. Um, and so, yeah, I'm going to be working on a sequel in the new year, and, which will also be my debut year. So hopefully that will be... You know, I, I can't even say like better than 2020 because like for me personally, 2020 was actually like fine, um, even considering that I lost my job. But like the whole of the external stressors of 2020 have been a lot. So hopefully next year is better. But I don't know, like it's not a true marker in time, but I'll be hopeful. Uh, yeah, so that's it for this video. I'm gonna stop rambling. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And yeah, comment. What should you comment? I don't know. Have you been working on anything in December? Or have you been like nano hangovered? Um, I would have been nano hangovered if I had like gone all the way for nano. But since I got really flighty towards the end, I was not nano hangovered over it which is why I was able to work in December but how did that go for you and yeah thanks so much for watching bye